Dr. William Nadera, an American board certified endodontist practicing in Bloomingdale, Illinois, right outside of Chicago. I'd like to take a few moments and walk you through a treatment case in which I use the Wave 1 reciprocating instrument in order to achieve my final shape. This is a bit of a challenging case, but it does demonstrate the unique capabilities of this particular instrument. Regardless of which engine driven instrument system you use, there are three main principles that I must maintain throughout the course of my treatment in order to achieve a predictable outcome. Number one, the preparation and maintenance of a glide path. Number two, achieving apical patency. And number three, recapitulation. I will make sure that I maintain and adhere to these principles throughout the entire course of this treatment. I like to use path files in order to create my glide path. Now, this can be done by hand, and I've done that for years, but the path files make this process much more efficient. I also like to use the Pro Taper Schaefer X file in order to open up the orifice, but it's the Wave 1 reciprocating file that's going to do the bulk of the shaping throughout this process. Before we start, note that the reciprocating motion of the Wave 1 instrument requires a unique technique that's different from traditional rotational instruments. Whereas rotating nickel titanium instruments require a slow fluid motion, the reciprocating motion of the Wave 1 requires short pecking motions with frequent removal for inspection and cleaning. Let's take a look at the pre-op radiograph. The pulpal diagnosis was previously initiated therapy and the periapical diagnosis was symptomatic apical periodontitis. As I mentioned, the coronal access is important. I am using the Pro Taper Shaper X file. I get great straight line access with this file. The debris pattern is just in the coronal and mid root area of the file. Irrigation is critical throughout the procedure. The Wave 1 file is inserted into the canal. The Wave 1 is advanced apically two or three times and then removed from the canal and inspected. After removal, wiping, and inspecting, the Wave 1 is introduced back into the canal for a second pass. I can't put enough emphasis on the need for maintaining patency. Here I am taking a number 3 path file back in the canal to loosen debris created by the Wave 1 reciprocating file. The irrigating needle now penetrates more apically in the canal space. The Wave 1 is inserted in a third time, and this time it is able to achieve proper working length. This time, the irrigation needle penetrates to within one millimeter of the predetermined working length. You are now seeing a radiograph of my working image with gutta percha cones in place at the predetermined working length. Take a look at the curve of this canal that is imparted to the gutta percha point as it's removed from the canal. You will now see two final radiographs from this case a straight on and a shift film demonstrating the nice conservative shape the Wave 1 reciprocating instrument achieves. As you can see, this was a challenging case, but it's my basic sequence for most root canal treatments that I do. The Wave 1 reciprocating instrument allowed me to achieve a shape that's both conservative and predictable for years to come.